Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and in today's video we are going to explore this website design which has a bit more complex uh, animations and interactions than usual. So first of all we have this hover effect right here on this read more button. Then we have this sign up newsletter uh, which pops up from the side. Then we have this nice looking menu uh, transition when they click right here on this hamburger menu. And finally, we have the slide changing itself. So when you click right here, it's going to change. The number is going to change the text, obviously text right here. This arrow is going to flip from left to right, as you can see right here. And also because we have this nice gradient coming from this side going to this side, it's going to update as well. So it's a bit lighter here than here because this image has a lighter background. So let's get started. Before we get started with today's tutorial, make sure to check out my membership. Link is going to be down in the description below. Membership contains all of the courses I created so far alongside all of the design products, private access to the Facebook group and these practice files for these YouTube videos. So if you're interested, once again, link is going to be down in the description below. Now let's check it out and you can see that this is the practice file which we are going to use for this tutorial. And once again, if you're interested to get this practice file, link is going to be down in the description below so that you can follow along this and every single other tutorial on my channel so you can see how I created all of these files and you can follow along if you want to. Now for this setup what we have is 1920 by 1080 you can see that we have 12 columns got a width of 60 column width of 82 and margins of each side which are linked and they are 138. But uh, before we get started, I just want to quickly show you once again what we are going to create. So basically what we have are uh, some uh, components and um, we are going to create some different components. So first of all, uh, there is going to be a major component for all of the content you see in the background. We are going to create a content uh, co for this uh, menu icon and then we are going to create another component for this newsletter icon. So how can you switch between them is all up to your design. Obviously, I would always recommend if you have um, all of these animations that you switch them into separate components because it's much simpler to deal with separate components than with one huge component. So whenever you have have to make a quick change you always have to dive deep into the component and to see all of these changes that you make to that particular component so if we go back to the design uh, as I said uh, we have this uh, these elements inside of our practice file but these are just some regular basic elements and uh, what I want to do is basically get started with some basic elements so first of all let's actually get started with our images so i want to uh, quickly draw 1920 by 1080 rectangle i want to position it right here and right here I remove the border go to my layers panel this is going to be image one control d and i don't know why my uh, caps look is on so image one and this is going to be image two and uh, I got these images from Envato Elements, so I want to drag and drop. So no, no, this is number two. Let's quickly hide this one. So let's actually position, this is going to be image number one. Let me hide it. And this is going to be image number two. So once again, these images are from Envato Elements. As I mentioned multiple times in my videos, I like to use Envato Elements because you're getting these extremely high quality images and you can play around with them. You can position them however you want. And of course, uh, licenses on these images are fantastic and you can use them for your projects basically however you want but what I want to do with this image is I want to make sure that this table is seen so something like this because I want to have this position of our text uh, I want to be able for our viewers to see the nature of this image. So why I'm using this image, this person in this exact pose, because we are telling the story, because once again, this is a blog website. So if I switch it to image number two, I want to do the same thing with this one. So I want to ex expand it a little bit and I want to double click and position this person somewhere around here, for example 
maybe narrow it down just a touch perhaps somewhere around here because if you remember we have this newsletter right here so i want to use that space for that newsletter and so that we have enough space on our image perhaps double click and remove this part of the lamp because i don't like it when it sticks right there and i like this part because it's not too distracting for our design overall so now that we have that perhaps it's time to get back to our text and when it comes to our text what i want to do is quickly use our text tool click right here and i want to type in marie jones in art and i want to make sure it's left aligned like so and position it right here i want to use the smallest one like so double click right here because this is going to be our uh, category so category is art in this case and I want to position it roughly around here. Uh, and then what I want to do is uh, use another one. So I'm going to use Control D on this one. Make sure I hide the top one. And then in the second one, I want to paste in this text. Business is obviously going to be clickable. So people can click on the business because it's that category and they can choose it and they can select it if they want to. Let me double click my zero key to hide this bottom one. So for, for example, we can put these in a group, call it categories like so. And now we can use another one. So click T right here and art from rubbish let me actually uh, select the original text from my design just so that we can speed this up a little bit and of course uh, this is going to be uh, poppins bolt 70 which is this one right here and what i want to do is hit ctrl d on it one more time hide the original one and i want to uh, select the other text from my original design like so and let's see for the spacing what we can do is perhaps bring this down a little bit like so perhaps make it 20 let's see i think that's going to be just fine and i'm going to move this down and i'm going to call it Control g call it main text like so and i want to use a rectangle really quickly and position this rectangle roughly around here so near the edges of my text call it mask and straight away hit shift Control m or shift command m on a mac and call this mask like so and i'm going to nudge my second text which is this sustainable text down below move it to there but actually before i do uh, i just want to position my other text because it's going to be uh, much more simpler for me to reorganize it uh, like so so what i need is that uh, let's see julia and i want to make sure that it's 24 like so and let me quickly select it paste it right there make sure we are 40 like that and that's why i didn't create a mask but now because we uh, are i can simply nudge our second text down below because i already spaced it out to be 40 from this top one and i'm going to position this one down below hit Control d to duplicate it hide my original text then come down to here and paste in this text for example somewhere around here which are thrown thrown away given second life so in three lines like the original one was and now let's go ahead and create a button so i'm going to actually uh, hide this second one show this first one i'm going to put them like so and call them for example let's say paragraph like this and i'm going to duplicate that text because once again it's much more simpler for me to do Control d position it right there and call it read more like so make sure it's in the center and what i want to do is uh, basically draw a quick rectangle and let me see perhaps three columns wide i think it's going to be good enough like that call it btn move it below our read more text like so and let me see yeah i think yeah three columns wide is good so let's see 366 with 80 like so make sure that our text is in the center of our button like so 
so 24 that's all fine and what i need for that is i want to quickly uh, introduce some styling so let me hide myself so you can see this right here so first of all what we want to do uh, actually is um, use the white color for our border so i'm going to come right here right click and apply border color now we have that white color for the border i want to increase the size of the border to two just so it's nice and visible and for this what we want is let's see for example white but i want to reduce the fill color down to zero so that we have just this uh, text uh, coming through what i want to do is hit ctrl g on this one call it btn for example and position it right around here ctrl k so i can create a component and let's see i can create a hover state for here so hover like so now inside of the hover state what we want is for this to be a little bit visible so what i want to do in this case is actually introduce a bit of color so instead of white color what i want is to click on this one but instead of uh, it being the full um full transparency what i would do is click right here click and use 50 because it's going to lower down uh, to 50 percent the opacity of the fill color but we're still going to keep the border color as it is okay so now that that's done let's quickly test it out and see what we've got so we have this nice hover effect going on i think that's looking fine and let's see perhaps we can position this to be i don't know let's say 80 like this just so that we have a bit more space and now that we have all of this what i'm going to do is hit ctrl and g call in this for example main text or text like that and let's see simply snap it into the center what i'm going to do next is quickly position my logo so here it is drag and drop it into place make sure it's somewhere around here and for example position it to be 30 so shift one two three like that and i'm also going to use my menu icon position it somewhere around here let's say for example but instead of position it here i'm going to use my rectangle tool and make sure that i go full width of my um of my column so i'm going to go back and remove that rectangle and let's see i'm going to uh position let's see my uh, menu icon below my logo and then simply make sure they are in the center like that so we are still 30 from the top so now that that's completed uh, what we need to do is include these numbers right here in the background so how i'm going to do that is quite simple use the text tool zero one like that and i'm going to use this playfair display 800 which is huge but uh, we are doing this just stylistically but also to make sure that people can actually see on which slide they are so before i reduce any opacity play around with masks i'm going to hide this one and type in 02 on this one and now that that's completed all we need to do basically is make sure they are down below and position them roughly around here somewhere for example so they are still overlapping our content but not too much not distracting somewhere around here i think it's fine and for them we are going to use 10 percent opacity so just hit one on your keyboard or come uh, down here to reduce the opacity to 10 percent okay so now that we have that what i'm going to do is use my rectangle once again and let's see roughly around here for example somewhere around there call it mask position it all the way down here and use shift control m one more time and these are going to be slide numbers like that and for these slide numbers i'm actually going to nudge number two down all the way down outside of our view right there and uh, before we move on any further what i actually want to do is uh, include my gradient so to do that what i'm going to do is uh, basically use my rectangle make sure i'm 1920 by 1080 because you cannot read properly all of this information i'm going to remove the border make sure i snap it to the top call it gradient 
and position it just below uh, our slide numbers and just above our images. So what I'm going to do for this is come right here. Instead of solid color, use linear gradient. I'm going to reduce uh, the white, but before I do, I want to position it here because I want lighter part to be right here and darker part to be roughly around here. What I'm going to do for the lighter part is lower it down to 0%. What I'm going to do for the darker part is actually use this color right here, like so. And then simply play around with some settings. For example, I can position it to be 70% roughly around there and then I can play around with my slider and make sure to uh, show more or less information depending on the slide in question for this particular slide because I think uh, the overall image is going to play a role really nicely I think that these settings work just fine but of course depending on your image you might want to play around with it a little bit more maybe add a few more stops in your gradient or uh, change the angle of the gradient overall so for, for example uh, position it up or down depending on what you want to do but I think for our particular example these settings work quite fine and I think we are going to just leave it at that so basically now that we have completed all of that what we can actually do is move down to this section because we actually need a slide changer because how people are going to be able to change between your slides so now in this case uh, what i need is to create a slide background so hey designer sorry to interrupt myself but i just wanted to quickly mention that you can get this practice file alongside every course and product i have ever made in my membership you can get this practice file if you want to follow along this and every future video i make link is going to be down in the description below so you can check it out if you're interested now let's get back to the video let me actually position it right around here and i want to uh let's see make sure that all of the corners are at zero what I'm going to do is remove the border. I'm going to use this color and I'm going to simply include a background blur option. And for the background blur option, I want to go with 20 for the opacity, just so that we can see the transparency uh, in the background a little bit. And let's see for the size, for example, 650 works quite fine. So one, two, three, four, five columns wide. And for the height, let's go with something a little bit bigger like 180 like that and let's see for the distance we can go with something like 60 so shift and up arrow to position it down to 60 and let's use control a d on this one and what i'm going to do is make sure to position it roughly around here because that's going to be our arrow background and let's name it so this is our slide bg and this is going to be our arrow bg our arrow background and let's go straight away and include our right arrow and include our left arrow and make sure to select them both select this and position it in the center like that and before we move on any further i actually want to uh, change the color of it so let's actually go with um, arrow bg because it has this uh, nice blur effect I just want to simply uh, use this color because it's going to differentiate this background from this background and it's actually going to tell the people that you can click on this part in order for you to change the slides actually so what i want to do next is make sure i mask it so hit ctrl d call this mask I need to copy this text position it right here and hit shift ctrl m one more time call this arrow bg like so and what i'm going to do is move my left arrow out of the way like so and that's going to easily mask it and basically that's it that's how it looks like i always like to check and see i think it looks fine perhaps we can move this background image a little bit more but i actually like how it looks like so let's let's just leave it there and not waste too much time i'm going to move this down to here and let's now play around with these numbers actually so what i'm going to do is uh use my playfair display once again and let's type in 
uh, right here t01 and let's go with uh, Playfair display but I'm going to change it down to let's say 80 and I'm actually going to create a new character style position it right here and let's see I can position it roughly around here for example so let's see maybe 40 like so and make sure this is in the center perhaps a little bit higher because this font is a little bit strange so control D and for this one I'm going to hide it and type in 0 0.2 now make sure that both of them are uh, coming from left side left aligned like that and let's see we are 36 so 1 2 3 4 and we are now at 40 straight away I'm going to create a mask like this call it mask and shift control M and call this slide numbers like this just so that we know what it is and I'm going to now use uh, the T for the text click right here type in something and I'm going to use let's see what we can do for this one so 24 poppins like this and I'm actually going to uh, copy this text from here like so and I'm going to make sure I'm in the center and I'm going to make sure I'm 40 from this text so somewhere around here I think it's going to be fine Control D one more time because now I have to hide this one and actually copy the text below so this sustainable future come right here Control V paste it in like so and let's now show this hide this second one and for our slide numbers I want to move number two down of the way actually no we are going to keep the number two because this is our slide number one I'm actually going to let's see position this up a little bit like that and let's see we actually need this text hide this text because art from rubbish is actually this uh, slide and sustainable future is actually the next slide so now that we have that completed what we can do is move all of this down to uh, slide bg we have arrow bg so slide numbers simply organize these just a tad and let's see how can we call this slide changer for example control g so slide changer like that and basically we are done with this main part of our design because we have uh, completed the names of the authors we have completed the names of the slides in question so names of the articles we have completed these paragraphs of the articles read more button works uh, the same way so it's just hover uh, separate from your component uh, we have the slide numbers here in the background so 01 and 02 and finally we have the changer in the top bottom uh, part of our background uh, on the bottom right part of the of the background finally what we are going to do is create two more components before we move on with the animation uh, as a whole we have the component for our menu and component for our newsletter so let's get started with that uh, what I'm going to do is actually work on our menu because uh, it's a little bit simpler actually to create it so what I'm going to do uh, at this stage is I'm going to um, let's see create a 1920 by 1080 background once again because we are going to keep it full screen for this example let's call it menu bg I'm going to position it just below our menu and I didn't show you this I created this uh, animation so we have default state and clicked state for this uh, menu icon and I have a tutorial on my channel you can browse it uh, tutorial is exactly the same like this but instead of two lines we have three lines so it's a bit more complex tutorial even on my channel than this one but basically between the states you just flip them 45 degrees and you achieve this result so if you're interested I'm going to make sure to leave the link down in the description below of this video for that tutorial so you can check it out if you're interested how to achieve this result but once again it's extremely simple 
now that we have that menu icon animation and I showed you that what we can do is play around with this menu uh, background so what I'm going to do is actually apply this color like we have so far we are going to include a background blur and for that option I'm going to include a 40 so we have a bit darker background blur than before just because we have to see the background image a little bit better in this case what I'm going to do next is actually come right here to the text main text I'm going to use this text Control C and come right here Control V and I'm going to make sure to uh, center it then we are going to have articles and make sure to center it once again Control G to put it in a group call it nav then I'm going to use the stack but I'm going to use this vertical stack I'm going to open it up Control D one more time and then simply switch them to let's say 60 and instead of articles I'm going to write categories like so Control D about us and finally Control D this is going to be contact us and of course you can uh, put as many categories as you want it's really all up to you I'm going to place it in the center like so position it just right here and for our menu background what we need is a tapping point now tapping point is really simple to create because you always want to have tapping point with these animations because it's much easier to prototype it when you have that tapping point than if you didn't and it's always easier to wire it than to have the animation of the icon itself and then try to wire it like that because the bigger the tapping point the easier for the user is to hit so I'm going to simply use a rectangle come right here use my clicked state because it's expanded come right here and hide border and fill call it tap point like so and make sure to position it just above my menu icon change my menu icon to my default state and what we can do at this stage is actually group all of these items so let's see hit Control G to group them and call it for example menu and finally what we need is we need to create a circle for the mask because we have that circle of motion for the animation coming from the corner and expanding and showing all of these elements and then hiding back once they click to hide the overall menu so how can we achieve that is actually quite simple simply use your circle for example like this and then call it mask I'm going to position it just below our menu icon because I want to mask the uh, items in the background and not the menu icon itself I'm going to position it roughly around here and you have to have it inside of your artboard in order to mask so let's quickly select these items below shift Control M to mask it and I'm going to call this mask for example and then once you mask it you can click and then you can position this circle outside so let's actually click on our mask if it wants to allow me if not you can use the shift and your arrow keys just nudge it out of the way so it's not visible on your screen now that we have that the uh, only thing which is left for us to do is to prototype it but I'm not going to prototype anything just yet because we still need to create that newsletter icon so to do that what I'm going to do is once again use my rectangle and position it roughly around here for example so let's see for that newsletter what we can do is call it newsletter bg and before I move on any further I want to quickly organize all of my uh, layers and groups which I have so far because it's going to be much more simple for me to understand where everything is to locate my way around this design and of course to uh, play around with these animations a bit more easily than if it's just scattered like this and I always recommend that you guys do the same because it's much more simpler to work with groups than with individual layers and always 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 try to name your layers as you work rather than at the end because it's going to really catch up with you because you have to name your layers for the developers later anyways so name, your, name them as you go along so for this we have this newsletter background and let's see for the dimensions let's go with 100 by let's say 80 I'm going to snap it to the center and to the right side like so and I'm going to play around with the styling so top left is going to have the 
five corner radius bottom left is going to have the five as well and let's apply this same color and let's see let's go with background blur and for these settings let's go with 20 percent like that and let's zoom in a little bit i'm going to uh, remove the border because i don't need it i'm going to include my email newsletter uh, icon like this make sure it's in the center and for this stage i want to make sure it's completely in the center like this and let's see i'm going to uh, click and write the text for example let's see sign for our newsletter make sure it's left aligned and let's see we can make sure it's 18 so it's really small where it is here it is so i'm going to place it right here and what we need is let's see newsletter icon position it right here what we need is that right arrow icon so drag and drop that inside as well and make sure it's in the center of our newsletter background and make sure to position it right here before i move on any further i want to make sure that all of these are grouped Control g and let's see call it news letter and let's see let's organize them just a little bit so this arrow icon is going to uh, actually come right here somewhere this is going to come right here so just at the very edge and this is going to come right around here for example so let's use Control k to create a component and let's see this is going to be clicked state for example so let's see inside of our clicked state what we want to do is actually uh, hide it so let's see i want to expand it to roughly around three columns wide so to do that uh, inside of a click state i'm going to select my email icon and newsletter icon and then simply expand this box to be three columns wide something like that and i'm going to make sure this is right here so let's see if there are any weird stuff going on they are not and in this case sign up is going to come right around here so let's see we are let's say 40 i think that's good and right arrow finally move it right around here and because we use the same styling for this one so it's in the center uh, of this placeholder i'm going to use the same technique for here so i'm going to uh, quickly draw a rectangle from here to here select my rectangle and my bottom arrow make sure they are in the center like that remove my rectangle and there we go so this is our newsletter expanded default state clicked state i think that work just fine now that we have set up everything it's really time to play around with our animation and this is the fun part because in this part you can really explore what you want to do with your design and really play around i always like to plan things as i create them as they come to my mind i really like to think how they are going to work and look once they are done and completed so in this stage we are actually going to start animating these components so to do that uh, what we need to do actually is to play around with them so first of all let's deal with this because it's really quite simple and i want to organize this is going to be here and this is going to be inside of here so hit Control g this is going to be content and this is why i said it's really important to group all of your components group all of your layers because it's going to be much more simpler for you to work with them a little bit later so in this case we are going to call it content hit Control k because once again we have the menu component which we still didn't create it so let's do that Control k we have the menu component we have the newsletter component we have the component for the content and we have the hover for our button so now let's work on our animations so first of all with the menu what i want to do is create a clicked state like that inside of our clicked state what i want to do is come right here to the mask and simply expand our mask use my shift and then shift alt for example to expand in all directions just so that this circle can fill the entire artboard like that and what i'm going to do is go back to the default state come to the prototype mode open up my tap point click right here tap auto animate choose the state clicked uh, easy in out and let's see duration 0 0.6 seconds because i really want to uh for it to open quite quickly but i want it to close a little bit slower 
just for that uh, animation effect. So click state. Now we need to animate the closing state. Click right here on the tap point. That's why we created it. Go to the default state, easy in out, and now choose one second. And to show you why we did that, if we expand this, click right here. You can see it comes really uh, fast, but now when you click to close it, it goes uh, a little bit slower. We forgot to animate this. So uh, inside of a clicked state, what I want is for our menu icon to be clicked. And that's why we created that. So if we switch back to the preview mode one more time, when you click, you can see that the menu icon is animating. And when you close it, you can see how that looks like. And if I hide myself, you can see the entire animation play around like that. Next, let's animate the newsletter. So uh, let's go with prototype and I'm going to unzoom a little bit, click right here. So tap auto animate, choose a state, click state, easy in out. And let's go with 0.6 inside of the clicked state. When you click right here, you can go to default state and 0.6, I think it's going to work just fine. Let's preview. Maybe 0.8, just so that the closing stage is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit slower than the opening stage. Yeah, I think it works just fine. Now comes the fun part because we have to animate this main component for the content inside and we have a bunch of the things animating inside. So really, this is where the majority of your work comes in. So if we switch back here, what we have is the content, but we still don't have uh, any uh, slide uh, created. So we have default state and this is going to be our default state. So now let's go around and create a new state, which is going to be slide two, for example. Inside of the slide two, what I want to do is first of all, let's change this text. So this first text for the categories, I'm going to lower down the opacity of this, bring this back. In the main text, in the mask, I'm going to bring this second text in because it's much simpler for me to align it like this and then move uh, this original text out of the way like so. Next, inside of the paragraph, I'm going to uh, hide this and bring this down in opacity like that. And let's see uh, for the slide numbers, what we want is for number two to come in, use your shift and up arrow until they align like this and then simply move number one out of the way like this. What I don't like uh, in this case is uh, for the paragraph, because if I show you, uh, we actually have hidden the first one. So if we go to the default state, what I want to do in this case, so let's see, um, text paragraph. This is what I don't like. So I'm going to actually keep it like this. So not hidden layer, but lower down a uh, visible layer, but lower down to a zero percent in opacity. And if you go back to the slide two, jump to our text and the paragraph, it's, uh, shown here, but hidden here. So this is how it's supposed to work. Let's actually bring the second slide like so. So now that this part is completed, what I need is for this to change. So let's jump in right here, slide numbers. So I want to bring in number two, uh, number one, sorry, back and hide number two out of the way like this. And finally, I want to hide this. So as you can see, we have uh, the same problem right here, like so. So let's actually go with the default state. It's a slight changer. So this is where it's going to be hidden. Let's go to the slide two and slide changer. Let's see number one. That's fine. And finally, what we need is for this arrow background, we need this arrow to come into place to make sure it's in the center like this. And this right arrow, I want to make sure it's out of the way like this. 
So basically they are uh, changing hands like this, so left and right whenever you change between these slides. If you have multiple slides, what you can do is actually duplicate these arrows. So if, they, uh, if the slides are going to the right, you can, for example, if you have three slides, you can have three arrows. So uh, first arrow is moving to the right, a second arrow is coming in. Then for the third slide, second arrow is going out of the way, third arrow is coming in and vice versa. You can really play around with that if you want to. Now, finally, what we need is that second image. So what I'm going to do is actually lower down this image in opacity. Now we have everything in place, but I really don't like this gradient too much. So I'm going to come right here and basically play around with it just a little bit. So perhaps roughly around here, just so that this part of our design is a bit more uh, visible because on the image itself, uh, that part is really lighter, so this part right here. And menu item uh, is not really all that uh, visible, but I think it's good and I think something like this uh, works quite fine. Like this. So now it comes the time to prototype it. Jump to the prototype mode. Let's see, select our slide mm, changer click right here, tap auto animate, slide two, easing out zero point, let's go with 0 0.6 and see how that works. Go to the slide two, slide changer, click right here and let's go with default state 0 0.6 and let's test it out, see how everything works so far. So our menu is working quite fine. Perhaps this closing stage is a bit too much. So maybe we can set this down to 0.8. Let's see, newsletter works just fine. It expands and closes nicely. Hover effect works as it should. And when we click right here, everything changes. I think it changes just a little bit too quickly. And you can see these arrows changing, numbers changing. Let's actually play around with the duration of it. So slide changer, let's go with, let's go with one second and see how that's going to play around and slide changer. Let's go with one second there. And what I want to do is set that for our menu. So uh, inside of the clicked state, I want to select my tap point instead of one second, 0 0.8 will work just fine, I think. So let's hit preview and let's see what we have. So first of all, the menu. Yeah, as you can see, it closes much more quickly. And for this one, yeah, I think that one second is working much better. Uh, hover effect works just fine on both of the slides. And you can see because of these gradients that we have in the background, uh, these backgrounds work much better uh, with changing images because the opacity and transparency works much better with uh, each particular image that you have on your design. So there we go. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, make sure to press that like button and make sure to subscribe because I upload videos like these every single week right here on the channel about Adobe XD, passive income techniques, design techniques, and much more. So if you're interested in content like that, make sure to subscribe. And once again, make sure to hit that like button so that YouTube algorithm can continue to support uh, this channel and to recommend these videos to other designers who might enjoy watching them. Thank you once again for watching and until next time, Take care.